watching simplify your concept hello everyone as we know that a major aspect of electrical engineering is the study of various electrical machines and without their implementation neither the power can be generated nor it can be transmitted and utilized so what is an electrical machine an electrical machine basically deals with energy conversion either from electrical to mechanical or from mechanical to electrical so in today's video we will discuss about dc machine and this is the fourth module of basic electrical engineering subject and it is divided into two units the first one is the dc generator and the second one is dc motor and as we know that a dc generator is an electrical machine which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and dc motor is the machine which converts electrical energy into mechanical energy so without further delay let's start the video with dc generator following are the topics that will be covered in this dc generator the first topic is the construction of the dc generator or basically the dc machine we could say principle of operation of the dc generator and then we will see how to get the emf induced in the dc machine and what is the expression of it then later we will see what are the different types of dc generator and followed by the applications of dc generator so let's start with the construction of the dc generator so basically as we know that a dc generator or a direct current generator is an electrical machine which converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and it has majorly following parts so we see here first part of the machine is called as the yoke as we can see here this is the constructional detail of the dc machine or i would say a cross sectional view of the dc machine i am calling it as a dc machine because the construction of dc generator or a dc motor is same so the same construction features is utilized for both the types of machines so the first part as you see here it is the outermost cover of the machine which is called as the yoke major part of the dc machine is called as poles so here this part which we can see here this is the part so here four pole this is a four pole machine and then again pole has two different parts one is called as the pole core and the pole shoe then we have the uh, field windings which is represented here as f1 and f2 so these are the basically windings which are put on the poles which are placed on the poles then we have the armature so the inner inside the pole we place the armature so this is the armature an armature is again further classified into two parts one is called as the armature core and the other one is armature winding so the circular thing which we see it is the armature winding and they are placed in armature slots then we have one more important component in the dc machine called commutator here so this part is commutator and then we also have brushes so here there are two brushes used and then inside finally we have the shaft so now let's see one by one each of the component and we will see what is the function of each component and what is the material which is used to make that component so first let's see yoke as we have as i have told this is the outermost cover of the yoke here is the one picture given of the yoke so the function of the yoke is it basically gives the necessary mechanical strength for carrying the magnetic flux given through the poles so as we know that the field windings we are placing on the poles and then when the current flows in the field winding the poles will be basically behaves as electro uh, electromagnetic poles and then they will produce the magnetic flux so that magnetic flux should uh, be given some strength so that they flow inside the uh, machine and that mechanical strength is given by the yoke it also protects the different insulating parts of the machine from various harmful atmospheric elements Okay, so these are the two functions of the yoke, and the material which is used to make the yoke is could be a cast iron or silicon steel. The second part of the DC machine is called as the poles, and as I told that poles are basically divided into two parts. One is called pole core, and the second one is called pole shoe. So the figure here we can see here this part is called as the pole core, and the down part, which is a stretched out part, is called as the pole shoe. So let's see what are the function of pole core. so basically the pole core carries the field winding that are necessary to produce the flux so we place the field windings on the pole core and these field windings are responsible for producing the flux in the machine 
whereas the pole shoe is mainly utilized for spreading this magnetic flux as well as to avoid the field winding from falling. So it gives a mechanical support to the field winding so that it doesn't fall. And it also allows, the, it also spreads the amount of magnetic flux so that maximum amount of flux links with the armature winding. Okay, so these are the two functions of the pole. And same material can be used as what we have used to make the yoke that is cast iron or silicon steel. So the next important part is the field windings. So we know that the field windings are basically placed on the magnetic poles. So here the field windings are shown. So these are basically the poles. This part what you see, these are the, these are the poles. And these are the magnetic, uh, these are the sorry field windings. So what does the field windings does? Basically, they carry the current so that the poles will behave as electromagnets and hence produce the necessary amount of flux. Okay, so when these field windings will carry current, the poles which are basically magnetic in nature, they are made up of cast iron or silicon steel. So they will behave, start behaving as electromagnets and hence they will generate the necessary amount of magnetic field or flux. So as we know, the windings are generally made up of copper. So that's the best material which is used to make this core or this field winding. The next important part of the uh, DC machine is the armature. So we say that armature again, it is divided into two parts. One is the armature core and the other one is armature windings. Okay, so here what we see here, this is the armature core. This part is the armature core and these are the armature windings. And these are the slots in which we place the field uh, armature windings. So what is the function of armature core? Armature core provides house for the armature winding that are placed in armature slots. Okay, so in the internal periphery, we have the slots and inside the slots, we place the uh, armature windings. Again, it also provides low reluctance path for the flux, which is produced by the field winding. So maximum amount of flux can be linked with the armature winding. And basically the generation of the voltage or the generation of the EMF takes place in the armature windings. Okay. So core will carry the armature windings, right? And the EMF will be produced in the armature winding. Okay, that is the function in case of DC generator. In case of DC motor, as I told, the constructional features are same for both the machines, but here the function will slightly change. So in case of DC motor, the armature windings will carry the supplied current, which is being supplied, which is given from the supply side. So material used for core, again, the same material, cast iron or silicon steel can be used. Whereas in case of uh, armature winding, best material used is copper. So the one more important component, which is the most important component of the DC machine is called as the commutator. So you can see here, this is the commutator. And as uh, you can also see here, this, this part, this part is also the commutator. This part is the commutator. Okay, this is the shaft which we can observe. This is the commutator. Okay. So, coming to commutator, the function of the commutator is what? To facilitate collection of current from armature conductors. Okay. So, as I told that, EMF will be produced in the armature winding. Feel all the armature winding forms a closed circuit. So, the armature current flows in the armature winding. So, that current has to be collected by the commutator. Why it has to be collected by the commutator? Because commutator is a device which basically convert internally developed ACMF into DCMF. So this is the major important function of the commutator. So as we know that EMF induced, any EMF which is induced, it's an AC voltage which is induced. Okay. But as I'm talking about DC generators, so the output what we want, we are we want a DC output. So here that AC EMF which is generated internally has to be converted into DC EMF. That conversion happens with the help of commutator. And it also, in case of DC motors, what is the function of commutator? It provides, it produces unidirectional torque in case of the motors. As we know, it, the motors basically, the output is mechanical output. So that is nothing but torque. So it produces a unidirectional torque in case of DC motors, okay? So again, here also the material which is used is the copper segment. So here we don't use it uh, copper windings. We use copper segments and there is an insulation which is used called mica insulation. So you can see here, this is the uh, copper uh, segments which are used and this is the mica insulation. One more important component we have in the DC machine is called brushes. The function of brushes is to collect current from commutator and make it available to the stationary external circuit. 
Okay, so we usually have the curve brushes which are made up of a soft material called carbon. Okay, and what does it do? Whatever the current which is produced, which is being there in the commutator, that will be taken from the brushes and then it will be made available to the stationary external circuit. So basically the output is taken from the brushes. So here you can see here, this if the commutators are this, then the brushes will be placed on the commutator. So this is all about the construction of DC machines. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next session.